Hello, this is Professor Kim Nelson with the Jewelry Design Department at FIT. Uh, in class, I'm going to do another uh, tutorial here uh, in our series on maquettes. Uh, the tutorials I'm going to begin now will be on maquetting a uh, cuff bangle. I, this is the image I'm going to use as reference. It's the same one I utilized. Uh, in my earlier demo. Okay, so um, I'm going to go into Rhino. I need to bring in a template uh, that I can use to size my cuff. We have some in our folder, our downloaded pages. Um, I'll be using, um, I think I'll use the one from Carbon French today. Right here. Um, this is a scan of a cuff bangle. Um, I don't have any issue, I mean, any reference for size in this image, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Um, our usual method, new canvas, one inch by one inch, 300 ppi. I'll just control all, control X, and paste it in here. I can delete this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this layer and make it more transparent. That'll work fine. And then I'll save this. You see, I'll move it so it looks a little more. Yeah, I'll save it. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to bring this into Rhino. I'm going to bring it in the front. As a picture frame. And just drop it in anywhere. Um, put it on a layer I don't use very often. That's fine. I want to now have some way of, well, before I scale it and move it, I am going to change its materials properties so that it's more transparent. So I can see my grid through it. Now I need a reference curve, uh, or I should say a target curve in this case, in the center of the viewport, just a rectangle starting at zero, rectangle from center, 25.4 by 25.4, gives me a one inch square. Copy this. into position on above my picture frame. Move it a bit, get it exactly or at least as close to exactly right as I can. And just regular scale and snap. Like so. I'm going to then select my uh, picture frame and do an orient two points. I want it to scale, yes, copy, no. Scale should be 3D. And then I'll just grab uh, reference point this corner, reference point this corner, target point this corner, target point that corner. So I now have it at scale. I want to center it now. Uh, to center it, I'm just going to take this box I'm going to line it up along the edge here. I will start with a regular scale. I'll scale it up until it touches the top. And then I'll do a non-uniform scale. To capture the full width and the full depth. And then I will use it to move the background bitmap. 
or in this case picture frame center snap and then zero and that should now be in position lock the picture frame um, I can delete that reference rectangle I'm going to draw ellipses from center capture the shape of this. Now this is a scan, so it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be a little bit of wobble to it. Um, I actually think I want to make it a little bit bigger um, horizontally, so non-uniform scale, zero. And I'll pull it out there. Leave Y the same, so one enter, Z the same, one enter. So, I have the circumference or the inside of my bangle. I'm going to offset this curve for my thickness here. Should be around three millimeters, I believe. Somewhere in that area. Yeah, well, this is actually a little thicker. 3.71. That works for me. Now that I've done that, I really no longer need uh, the picture frame. So, um, it would be useful. Uh, I'm going to set these curves up so that their seam is on the bottom, just like a wood with a ring. So, curve, edit tools. Adjust closed curve scene, quad snap, so I have that ready. And what I need to do now is I need to know what the length of this is. Now there are a couple of things I'm curious about. I would like to know what the length of this is in inches just out of my own curiosity. So um, analyze length. 180.765 um, 180.765 divided by 25.4 it's a 7 inch uh, roughly a 7 inch interior that is pretty standard um, just wanted to check on that I want to find out what the length here is because this I'm going to use for a flow curve 204.092 so I'll make a straight line 204.092 millimeters long move it from its midpoint you'll notice I often right click on my object snap so that I deselect all my old ones and just have my new fresh one if I really want to be Precise, I, I'll tend to do that. It's pretty good hygiene as far as modeling is concerned. So, I have a flow kit here that'll suffice for flowing any information I want. But more importantly, right now, I have a length curve uh, for the full length of my cuff. I would like to now extrude this cuff out. So, surface tools, both sides, solid yes. And um, actually, I need to just have this image. So, extrude, solid. I'm going to draw, create what I think represents about what that object is. I think that's good. Now that I have that, I'm going to start drawing the top view of my cuff. So I'm going to do a curve uh, offset, both sides, through point, and I'll grab anything I can here to give me um, my thickness. There we go. I no longer need that, I'll hide it. Um, I'm actually going to delete one of these and mirror the other over with history. 
because this has a taper to it, and I want to now draw that taper. So I'm going to rebuild this curve. 3, 2. Uh, this is one of my favorite curve maths for creating a taper on something like this. Uh, I need to turn on the control points, but I don't want control points in this case. I would actually like to have edit points. So I'm going to go to edit, control points, and I want to hit show edit points. You'll remember that the point of an edit point is that the curve is forced to pass through it no matter what. So when I move these two points down, the curve has to stay locked into that point at the top. It's a nice way of maintaining control. And you'll see I am now tapering uh, both of these at the same time. I'm going to lose the grid for a minute, just so I can get a good sense of what that actually looks like. I think they need to be moved a little bit more. So I'm using ortho, always ortho on this, because I want to keep that length at the end exactly the same. I think that's good. Bring my grid back. And I want to round the ends. So I'm going to create a blend curve for that. I'm going to draw a pretty good sized circle here. Mirror it over. And use this circle to trim off the two ends of that curve. Because there's history still attached, it trimmed the bottom curve as well. I'm going to use fillet to trim off uh, the end of this curve. Remember, if we blend into a straight segment, we are guaranteed tangency across here. I'm going to want to be able to use history to adjust this, so I'm not going to use an adjustable blend curve because that doesn't allow for history. I'm going to use a quick blend curve. So, quick blend, record history, mirror. Now, to bring those handles back, the same handles we would have in an adjustable blend curve, I'm going to type an end bulge for the first two letters of end bulge. And I can grab these handles and I can move them. Try and get something more like what I have here. And you'll see that it updated automatically. And I think that's actually very nice. And we are across. And delete. And join. So there's the general out outline of my cuff. Now I want to put in uh, some details on the cuff. It's in the cat. So I do want some, some details here. So I'm bringing this back in from being hidden. I want to know where these notches are. I want to know how large this medallion is. I want to know what size this hole is. So extract ISO curve. Remember this is just pulled out from here and set over to the side. It's that toolbar docked along the side of the screen. In case your workspace does not match mine. I'm going to select the surface here. I don't want this direction, I want the other direction. So I'm going to rotate this into kind of the same position the image is in. That's about right. I'm going to mirror it over. And take a look. That doesn't look bad to me. That looks pretty good. Um, and the length of the medallion is the same length as where these cuts take place. Um, the hole is a little farther down. I'm going to disable X enter, disable my object snaps. Because they keep getting in my way. I think that hole is about there. And I think it goes to about here. Okay, I think that's reasonable. 
I'm going to mirror all of these. Actually, I'm not going to mirror them over. I don't need to. Um, what I am going to do is create uh, a shape for that hole, but I won't do it yet. Uh, the last thing I want to do is I want to establish the width of that cross type element. So I want the bands to go this way. And it's about there. Okay. So I have what I need. I'm going to trim these curves up so I can use them. I should mirror these over. Now, um, grab these two, trim this off. And I want to take, and I want to take this entire block of curves. And I want to reverse flow them. I want to flow them down onto this curve. So transform, flow along curve from here to here. And there they are. I can delete the ones in 3D. And put them in green to match my top view there. And that gives me a nice layout for the various elements. I want to draw the notch. The notch is kind of a flame shaped thing. The fastest way for me to do that is just an arc start in direction. Say something like that. I'm going to rotate it with copy option. get something like what I see in the picture. And join them together and rotate them again, this time without the copy option. First I'm going to move them into position. Move it into position. So this is actually the location for that slot. So something like that. I'm going to mirror it with history. So I can get a sense of how far it's biting in from each side. I think it needs to bite in a little bit more. I think it needs to be a little bit larger. But not going out wider, so non-uniform scale. I think that's actually pretty good. I will mirror these across. And I will use them to trim each other out, the notches and the outline. And then I'll hit join combine them into a closed curve. My hole is about like that. Um, I'm just going to make an ellipse. Ellipse diameter. To give me something like what I want. That seems a little small for my hole, so I'm just going to use a scale, 3D scale. Make it a little more robust. That's fine. Don't need these reference lines anymore. I'll get rid of them. Mirror this over. Okay, last thing I need to do is to draw this cross form. And the cross form is actually, um, it's, it gives the impression of a uh, eight-sided, like you've got one, one, two, three, four, and then things in between, but that's really not the case. Um, it's, it's very freeform, and they're kind of just a fan-shaped cross, so 
that's what I'll try. So, offset, both sides. Get me something nice and, you know, relatively wide. And fill it. And for the horizontal direction, it's even wider. It's almost as wide as the vertical bar. About there. And fill it. Okay. Uh, I want to trim these out using each other, so I want to join them. I'm actually going to delete one side. And I'm going to join these together as well. Actually, not that. No, just that. Okay, so I'm going to record history. Mirror. And record history and mirror again. And now I can take the control points, turn them on. And I can pull that until I get something that I feel somewhat accurately displays the shape that I have there. I think that's fine. Join these together. That's really all of the detail I'm going to need, or really want, uh, for my drawing. And this is a good place to stop this video, so I'll pause now.